Oh. Hey there. Let's talk about direction. Hi, I'm Les Raymond with the Mindful Movement. Thanks for joining me today for another mindful tip. Today's tip is on direction. The direction in which our decisions point. So I'm really big into wellness and I'm always trying to stay curious to like, what does that even mean? And how do I apply ideas of wellness and good health to my lifestyle? And how do I shape my lifestyle? And how do I help others to shape their lifestyles so that aligns with an idea of wellness that's important for them? And one thing I've noticed over the years is there seems to be like a missing component in the wellness field. You know, when you look at like the corporate world, there's always this idea of moving towards something that's identified. Like companies will do forecasting, whether it's forecasting sales or performance. Like there's something that dictates the day-to-day -day decisions. There's an idea, there's a direction in which their decisions point. But as we, as we grow up, you know, as you go through schooling, I mean, there's, there's just very little talk about where does your wellness go? Like, what direction does it point? Where's the target? What's the goal? And I think it's important to just revisit goals, our wellness goals, our health goals, regularly. It's been it's very clear that the things that we spend our time thinking about, you know, what, what we dwell on in our mind expands. It's so easy for us as humans, you know, we have this negativity bias to dwell on things that we don't like. My leg hurts. Oh, my leg hurts. I can't stop thinking about my leg. If, if only my leg didn't hurt. I'd be happy if my leg didn't hurt or whatever it is. Or if I didn't have this ailment. We spend so much time dwelling and thinking about what we don't like and very little time dwelling on where we're going, where we would like to go, where, what would we like our wellness, our health, our physical well-being, our spiritual, our emotional well-being, what would we like it to look like? What would that be like? And we're way more likely to move in that direction if we're thinking about it. If it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind, if we're never visualizing it, never using our imagination and never, really never identifying, this is where I'm going. This is the direction in which my decisions point. If we're not thinking about that, we're just much less likely to make a decision that goes in that direction. So today, I'd like to just remind you to pause and think about where you would like your well-being to go. What's the direction in which your decisions point? Where is the guiding light? What does it look like? Physically, what does it look like? What does your ideal physical body look like? You know, we know that we are not our bodies, but we're in here somewhere. I think I've mentioned this before, you know, 10 years ago, none of the cells in your body right now were there. And 10 years from now, there'll be totally different cells. So we know that on some level, our body's not us, but we're in there somewhere. So our body's housing something, and this is our vessel. And we want to take care of it, ideally, so that we could do the things that are important to us, um, whether that be you know, relate to others or serve the world, hopefully in a positive way. But, um, you know, you have to be fit to serve on some level. So taking time and pausing and say, well, what does that look like? What is the ideal physical me? Maybe what does it 
feel like emotionally, you know, to be present, to be centered, to be grounded, to not be caught up in anxious thoughts or dwelling on depressive thoughts. You know, what does it mean spiritually? Your relationship with, um, you know, maybe some higher power, whatever that, whatever that means for you. Or not. But just to get an idea of, like, what would you like? What is the desire? And the more we think about that and dwell on it and know that the things that we do align with that, it's a lot easier to make those decisions. It's a lot easier to be clear about how we live today when we're very clear on where we want to go. I don't remember ever as a young child somebody asking me about what was important to me from a health standpoint, you know, where the target was. So as an adult, you know, I, I learned that I guess the hard, the hard way, or I took the long cut to come to that realization, really going off course with health quite a bit, because I never stopped to say, what do I want it to be? So now I think about, what do I want it to be? And I think about it regularly, because it makes it a lot easier to do the things that go in that direction. Ideally, our decisions will allow our body to provide more utility for whatever it's housing, for the for the us that's inside, for the you that's in there. You know, somewhere you're in there. You have this awareness. You can hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. You're in there somewhere. And your body's housing that you. So how do we provide more utility? How do you get your body to provide more utility? What does that body have to look like and feel like so that you can be your best you? And how often do you think about that? What I could tell you is the more often you think about it, the easier it will be to make decisions to line that way. And, and again, we'll lose some of the, the conflicts that are very common. You know, some common things that we run into are like food conflicts. I want to eat this. Oh, I know I shouldn't. We have these like internal conflicts in our mind. But if we see ourselves in the future, where we're going, then it's just, it's just a lot easier to aim in that direction. But we have to know what direction. What's the direction in which our decisions point? If we want to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, if we want to have an anti-inflammatory diet, well, everything we put in our mouth is going to have either, you know, there's not a lot of neutral. It's either inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. So if we're clear on, I'd like to have, a, you know, live in a, a low inflammatory environment, well, then I could, if that's important to me, I could think about that. I could think about what that looks like and what that means for my well-being and how I, maybe I can move pain-free and my joints feel good. And my energy is good, and I could say, well, that's what I want. So I'll eat this and not that, because I know this aligns with that. It's just tough to make those decisions when we're never thinking about where the decisions point to. What's the direction? So today is a, a reminder to pause and remind yourself, what direction are you going? And this could be, you know, well beyond just food. I use that example, but, you know, for any of the, the inputs that add up to our well-being, so that could be sleep or how we manage stress or how we manage our thoughts, you know. Do we practice positive thinking or do we practice negative thinking? Do we practice healthy relationships? Do we practice being a good listener? Do we practice listening to our body of what's necessary? Because there's a difference between having a direction that our decisions point and being an attached to that outcome. So to have an idea of where you're going is really important. Attachment to that could get you in trouble. You know, if you're thinking about, let's say, exercise, let's say we think, well, exercise is good for us. So 
and I know that in the equation of me being my best self, there's exercise somewhere in that equation. Now, if I'm attached to that idea that I have to exercise right now or on this day for that purpose, you know, ultimately that could lead to a challenge if I'm not listening to really what's best for me. So to have an intention of living in a way that aligns with that direction is a little different than being attached to that outcome that I have in my mind. I just want to be moving in that direction. And some days my body might say, um, this doesn't serve. And it could be within a certain exercise itself. You know, the dose may make the poison. So maybe this exercise is really useful in that quantity or at that intensity, but at this much, it no longer serves. And to be able to be objective and analyze the self, to say, to know when we're adding utility, when we're providing more utility for our body, or we're, when we're detracting. For instance, let's say I could do 10 push-ups really well, in a way that serves me very well. I feel good, I've, I've added this little uh, input that's allowed me to become stronger, so that tomorrow I am now stronger because of the push-ups I did today. But if I have in my mind that I just have to do as much push-ups as possible so I can get to this outcome, well, that's, that's kind of a recipe for injury. Not if, just when. Eventually, if we're attached to that outcome, there'll be a price to pay. But if we could stay curious to the question of what serves, am I, am I getting better at this? Am I providing more utility? But it really begins with thinking about what's the direction not the outcome that I need, but what's the direction in which it's pointing? And then we just try to take steps along that path in that direction, knowing that there's going to be times where we step off course. The practice would be is when I'm off course to be able to see it, say, oh, look at me, I'm over here. I'm off course. Let me get back on course. Oh, I'm over here now. I did one too many. It hurts a little bit. Uh, let me get over here. Let me get back on course. Let me just be in practice of moving in the direction that I identify is something that I value. That's today's talk on direction. I hope you find this video useful. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be bringing out more videos that break in uh, a little more detail of how to apply this idea to the different categories that add up to our well-being, whether they're movement related and how to put together a movement practice with that in mind, or nutrition related, or how to manage stress. The things that really add up to who we are and what we are physically and emotionally and spiritually. Um, you know, how to apply the ideas, the concepts, so that we're making those decisions in a way that is really connected to, to who we want to be and the direction we want to go. If you know somebody you think would find this video useful, please share it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you want to take a more in-depth, deep dive on a more personal level of how to manage these decisions and how to help shape your life in a way that you deem valuable, then you could either try our online course, our um, five-week Living Fulfilled course, or you could reach out and work with Sarah or I on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I hope you have a great day.